In this video, we will show you how to integrate your VoiceFlow chatbot onto a website and display proactive messages to catch the user's attention. We also show you how to make the chatbot pop automatically. Lastly, we will show you how to use a form extension to enhance user experience. I will use a local host as an example to integrate a VoiceFlow demo chatbot. I have installed a WAMP server on my computer, and we are on the www folder. We have a website named as demo. In this folder, we have a very simple HTML file index. Let us open it with Visual Studio Code. It shows one paragraph, this is VoiceFlow chatbot demo. Let me change this to H1 to make the words larger. Now we go to localhost web page and it shows the sentence. This is a very simple website. Let us go to VoiceFlow Canvas, which has a chatbot we have built in the last video, and we will integrate it to our website. Click the integration icon. If you have not published your bot yet, please do so before the integration. As I have already done it, we can click to make a copy of this code snippet. We paste it here before the closing body tag. If you have a WordPress website, you can paste it in the footer. Then, we go to our website and refresh it. We can see the chat bubble showing up. After clicking on it, we see the chat window. I can click the yes button and it moves to the next step. This is working, and it is very easy to integrate the chatbot with any web page you want. Next, we will make the chat dialog window open automatically. We add this code snippet in the onload function. After the chatbot loading, we set timeout 1000 milliseconds, which are 1 second, and the voice flow chat window will automatically open without the user clicking on it. Let us go to the website and click refresh. We see the chat window automatically popping up after the web page loading. Let us refresh the web page again, and we see the window popping up without clicking. Next, we will show you how to display proactive messages. We use this line of code to load the message after loading the chatbot. We have commented out the time delay code. The type is text, and the payload contains the message you want to display to the user. Here, we say, get 20% off for all flowers which can catch the user's attention to buy your products with a discount. In this proactive array, you can push multiple messages. Let us go to the web page and refresh it. We see the message showing here. We close it and refresh the web page again. Now we still see the proactive message. This works perfect. Next, we will show you how to use a form extension to enhance the user experience. In the www folder, we have added a JS file with the name of extension. Let us see the code. The first line is to export the form extension. The name is forms. The type is response. There is another type, which is effects. Here we use the response type to get data after the user submitting the form. For the match, we check if the extension name is same as the trace type or the trace payload name. Next, we render the form. We create the form element and put some styles. The form has inputs for the user to enter name, email, and phone number. We also do validation. We have a submit button for the user to click after he has filled out the form. Next, we add an event listener. We fetch the data and save them in the variables, name, email, and phone. We check the validity for each variable. After the user submitting the form, we remove the submit button. Lastly, we respond with the type of complete and pass the data in the payload to be fetched in the last event variable. We need to append the form to the element. The entire code is from VoiceFlow, and I have put the link down at the description. If you hover on the function, you can see the structure of the function. In the HTML file, we need to do some modification. First, we change the type to module. Secondly, we add this line of code to import the extension with the extension name from the JS file with its URL. Thirdly, we add this code snippet and put the form extension in the extensions array, so that the VoiceFlow chatbot can load the extension. Now let us go to the website. We refresh it. Let us close the window. Start the new chat. Click yes, and we see the form has been successfully loaded. The bot is waiting for us to fill out the form because we have used a custom action block and turned on the stop on action. 
Now let us fill out the form with the name, email, and phone number, and submit it. The bot says, Thank you, John. Let us go to Zapier, and we see the new data have been added to the table. Just remind you, we use the custom action block to execute the form extension. We put the name exe underscore form here, and the path of response submitted. We need to turn on this stop on action to wait for the user to fill out the form and submit it. Again, the name of the type in the custom action should be matched to the trace type or the trace payload name. In summary, we have shown you how to embed the VoiceFlow chatbot to a web page. You can make the chat window automatically open or add proactive message to catch the user's attention. We have also shown you how to use a form extension in the lead generation to enhance the user experience. Hope this video helps. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.